Hi, this is a presentation on the paper Style Change Detection using BERT that was submitted as a solution to the challenge Style Change Detection held by Pan and Clef for the year 2020. I'm Arish Iyer, currently a master's student in computer science at Dartmouth College, and this research is conducted alongside Dr. Sarush Vasugi, a professor in the Department of Computer Science at Dartmouth College. So, to introduce the this research was firstly submitted as a solution to the Style Change Detection Challenge, as I mentioned. There were two subtasks for the challenge. The first, given a document is a document written by multiple authors. And the second, given a sequence of paragraphs of a supposedly multi-author document, is there a style change between any of the paragraphs? So to give an example taken from the overview paper itself, we have three documents over here, A, B, and C. For the first document, there is no style change between either of the paragraphs. Hence, for task one, it's labeled as zero. And for task two, it is the list of labels where there's only one label in this case, which is also zero. For example, document B, uh, we can see that we have three paragraphs and between the first two paragraphs, there's a style change, which is why for task two, the labels are one and zero. And for task one, since there are multiple authors, it is one. The same can be observed for document C as well. To talk a bit about the data set. So all the data was extracted from the Stack Exchange family of websites. And for this challenge, we were provided with two separate data sets. The first was data set narrow, where question and answers were collected from a specific subset of Stack Exchange websites that only pertain to topics of computer technology. The second was data set wide, where the question and answers were collected from a subset of Stack Exchange websites that pertain to a wide variety of topics, ranging all the way from technology and economics to literature and math. It makes sense to have two separate data sets simply because we can find out if the topic of the sentence or the document is in any way important to the style change detection challenge or if it eschews it in any way whatsoever. These two figures show the percentage of documents versus the number of style changes for both data sets. It makes sense that for zero, we have 50% of documents because the data set was balanced when it was provided to us. For more statistics on the number of sentences and paragraphs for each data set, one can refer to our paper. So here's a good point to just take an aside and talk a bit about BERT. So BERT stands for Bidirectional Encoder Representations from Transformers. It is a large scale pre-trained deep model that is used for solving a variety of NLP challenges and has also got some state of the art results in all of them. So of all the BERT models available, which there are many, we chose specifically the BERT base case model, which has about 12 layers, a hidden size of 768 and 110 million parameters. We went with the case model as opposed to the uncased model because we felt like having a case as a feature would be important to the time change detection challenge. And this was proved during our experiments because for the case model, we achieved an F1 score of about 0.96 more than for the uncased model. So here's just a figure taken from the BERT paper itself. And we can see the performance that BERT base and BERT large had um, for all of these various NLP benchmarks. Just to talk a bit about BERT large, as the name mentions, it is significantly larger than BERT base. Um, it has 24 layers and about 340 million parameters. We did not experiment with BERT large because it was computationally too in, uh, intensive, but it would be interesting to observe if using BERT large would actually increase our performance for this challenge. This is also a good time to mention that BERT actually captures semantic features as opposed to syntactic features which is uh, counterintuitive to this challenge because it makes sense to actually capture syntactic features. But the information that is captured by BERT is just extremely important and is very helpful in helping solve this challenge. So here's our approach. Given a document, the first thing to do was to split it into paragraphs, in turn to split it into sentences, which we then pass through BERT, which provide us with embeddings. We then took these embeddings and processed them specifically for task one and task two. And I'll explain this whole approach with an example. So firstly, we have a document over here which has three paragraphs. Each paragraph has two sentences. So this was fairly straightforward to do to just split it on the number of paragraphs itself. The problematic thing was when we had to try to split it into sentences. 
So initially it seems trivial because one can just split on a period. But the issue is that there are various exceptions to that, such as salutations of Mr., Dr., um, Miss, and so on and so forth, as well as some abbreviations such as etc. and IE that can end up screwing up how the sentence is performed. That's why we had to use our own custom regular expression approach in order to ensure that the sentences are split correctly. Following this, we gave each sentence to Bert, which returned us embeddings. So just a bit about these embeddings. Firstly, Bert returns a tensor for each sentence, which is of size 12 times the length of the sentence times 768. 12 because it has 12 layers, 768 because that is the hidden size of the Bert embeddings. The authors of Bert recommend that we must, you must only use the embeddings of the last four layers because that's where they found out the best results come from. And you can either sum up the last four layers or you can concatenate them. We chose to sum them up because concatenating would lead to a tensor of size 3072, which uh, would end up being more computationally intensive, which is why we just went with a single tensor of size 768. Of course, in this uh, diagram, I'm only showing the first four dimensions, but there's actually 768 dimensions. So with these individual embeddings for each sentence, we then process them differently for task one and task two. For task one, in order to obtain the document level embeddings, we just averaged all of the embeddings of the sentences. For task two, we averaged the embeddings of two consecutive paragraphs. Thus, if we had n paragraphs in the document, we would have n minus one data points. Now, these data points would have labels associated with them that would determine whether or not a style change occurred between those two paragraphs. So we tried various classifiers, various binary classifiers for task one on data set wide. And as it is clearly observable, random forest significantly outperforms all of the other classifiers, which is why we just went with random forest to create our other classifiers as well. A thing to note at this point is that none of these classifiers were grid searched. They all just use the default parameters that SKLearn provides. We then created custom classifiers for both tasks on the narrow and wide dataset. These classifiers were grid searched and the hyperparameters of those can be found in our paper. On the test set and the validation set, it is clearly observable that there is an inconsistency between the document level performance uh, for both, and I will address this inconsistency in the coming slides. One thing to note that was pointed out in the overview paper is that it would be interesting to observe how our best performing classifier would perform for all four tasks. We actually tried that during our experiments and they performed pretty well. We just went with the grid search classifiers for each because we wanted to ensure our best chance at winning the challenge. We actually tried some other methods as well as we were working through this task. And for those who wanted to create a custom data set of sentence pairs from two consecutive paragraphs. The label of the data point would be assigned based on the following policy. If the two sentences are from the same paragraph, then the label would be zero. If they're from different paragraphs, but there was no style change between the two paragraphs, the label would again be zero. But if a style change occurred between the two paragraphs, then the label would be one. The dataset was severely imbalanced at this point, so we balanced it by removing data points at random of the majority class. So with this custom dataset now, we tried two different methods. The first, we tried fine tuning BERT using the sentence pair dataset, but what we noticed that the accuracy in the F1 score just plateaued after a point. We didn't experiment much um, in this direction, but it would be interesting to find out what the issue was and whether or not that is a viable solution. The second approach was our take on trying to combine semantic and syntactic features, where we used a convolutional neural network approach. Again, we've passed through the sentence pairs through BERT, so we got tensors of size L1 plus L2 times 768. We then ran them through kernels ranging from kernel size of 2, 3, 5, all the way to 5 times 768. This was our attempt at trying to capture n-gram stylistic features. Experiments are still ongoing with this technique as we couldn't finish it before we submitted our solution, but we definitely want to see whether or not this would improve the overall performance for this challenge. Now, some pitfalls about our solution. The first is the runtime. Since BERT is a deep model, Having a GPU really helped during all of our experiments, but 
The issue with Tira is that it do not have access to a GPU, so we face significant problems while we were trying to submit a solution. And we calculated that without a GPU, it would take a couple of days for our program to run. So we put some measures in place to ensure that our program didn't crash or it just timed out. This is why there's an inconsistency between the document level performance for the test set and the validation set. The second pitfall is that we just focus on semantic features at this point of time. And we do believe that the most optimal approach would be to combine the semantic and the syntactic features in one way or another. Lastly, some future work. The first thing to do would probably be to fine tune BERT as theoretically it should improve our performance. We do not have enough time to experiment with that, but that is something we should definitely try in the future and it would be interesting to observe if it would actually improve the performance. The second would just be to combine the semantic and the syntactic features. Our CNN approach is our attempt at doing this and hopefully that would produce the results that are better than the solution that we have right now. With that, I'd like to conclude. Thank you.